talks about the, the time will come. <laughs> time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine anymore. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their engineers want to hear. We don't do that here at Open Gate. We don't do that. We just go verse by verse, and God helps us. Let's pray for this morning's service. Lord, we thank you that we're gathered here today, that we humble ourselves before you. Lord, that we yield our lives to you so that we can serve. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for being in our lives, for allowing us to have that communication with you, giving us the power, Lord, to just pray for you, get on our knees, pray for others, pray for ourselves, anything that uh, we're going through. We can always turn to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. Let's all stand together. Good to see everybody out today. I feel like Christmas in in June. We've been studying about Ephesians chapter 4, and it says that Jesus ascended and he gave gifts to men. Some of you, you're going to realize today what kind of gift or what gift was given to you. You don't even realize it. Christmas in July. You know, uh, just uh, uh, off on a tangent fact, factoid, you know how we celebrate Christmas? I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. We, it's really cold. Uh, you know, on the other side of the world, it's not. Down in Argentina, you know how they celebrate Christmas? Barbecues and pool parties. Yes. So they celebrate Christmas when it's hot. In flip-flops, shorts. I don't think they'll ever be dreaming. They're, they say, I'm dreaming of a hot Christmas. So you can have Christmas in the summer. God is going to show us today what kind of gifts he's given us. And let me just tell you, is he your father? What? That means you are his child, a child of love. Let's celebrate that this morning. All right, come on, let's put our hands together this morning. Chasing the highlights. Come on. Trying to 
God of love. Anybody can say amen this morning to that. Anybody got a testimony? All right, let's sing it. I saw Satan fall like that. I saw darkness run for color.
I believe it, I think I'm, hope I'm saying this right, I think it's in James chapter one, so that God's working all for our good. I said that last week, I'm gonna say it again. I was listening yesterday to Charles Stanley and he was talking about how, you know, we have to go through some things to be tested and to be approved by God in, in these areas in our life. And, you know, I'm not really one that goes deep into stuff. I, I hate reading, I hate listening to stuff, okay? But I listened to it, my mom sent it to me, I said, I'll listen to it, you know? And he was saying how we have to be, we have to go through some things in order for God so we can be tested and approved, not by man, but by our obedience to God. See, sometimes we can be, uh, we can say, well, you know what? I'm gonna do this, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna forgive them, but I'm not gonna forgive them because they hurt me. Or I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, but I'm gonna not do that. See, so this morning I'm here to tell you that God's taking you turn morning to dance. He's taking that morning right now. And pretty soon, my brother, you're gonna be shouting and dancing because, not because everything's okay, but because you know the outcome. How many know someday we're gonna be shouting and dancing in heaven? It may not be on here, here on earth, but someday, little by little, as we get closer to God, we begin to say, Lord, I'm, I'm messed up. Father, I'm jacked up. I can't do it anymore. I've done everything. I've tried this. I've tried that. Only the love of God, only him, Jesus, can change your life. And this morning, he's getting ready to turn your mess into a message. He's getting ready to turn that storm into a beautiful spring day, my brother. Come on, Perry. Huh? He's going to take that past. Come on, Tom. I'm here to tell you, if you've been walking the same. Oh, sorry. He, got, he has to turn on the music. I'm just getting going already. Right here. You've been walking the same for miles and miles. Let's sing this together. If you've been here in the same old
get out of our seats for a few moments and just greet your neighbor. Tell them you're happy to see them in the house of the Lord today. Introduce yourself to them. You haven't seen them in a while. You don't know them. He's a change.
All right. Can you hear me? It isn't quite like a meat lock right here like they want it. What's that? They said that they want it to be like a meat lock right here and you're not doing it. <laughs> Another thing is, hey, uh, a couple of weeks ago you said something that touched me. Okay. You said God created everything, did he not? He did. I was looking at the moon this morning and I thought that's beautiful, God. Well, he created the lights and the water. All right, let's find our places, everybody. Can you hear me? Am I on? Can you can hear me? All right, there we go. A little bit better. Is that better? Okay. All right. We have been seeing this transition of the, of the weather. We had a pretty good um, spring. It was a li little longer than usual. But now, brothers and sisters, summer is here. And uh, what's, what's, what's the date actually for today? 23rd? Two days ago... The 21st, that's the first day of summer. It's the longest day as far as sun. It's because the sun is at its lowest point and we get the most sun that day. And so um, that's, indi that's an indicator that scenes seasons are changing. So now it's the longest day as far as the amount of daylight, right? Now what starts was going to start happening? Now we cross that threshold, now it'll start changing, and it'll start getting less and less. You know that? Yeah, you, you guys know that. So by the fall, you know, it'll start getting darker earlier. These are all things that help us understand that with God, things change as far as in this world that he has us in. Yet, with God... He never changes. He's faithful. Was he faithful yesterday? Is he faithful today? Yes. Will he be faithful tomorrow? Yes. That's right. He has revealed himself. He has revealed his personality, his character to people, but only to those who are looking. Remember we talked a little bit about this the last couple of weeks? Um, the perspective of a person who is maturing. They see things. And a person who is immature, they don't see things because their perspective is an immature perspective. And we talked a little bit about how um, you get a child um, and they, you guys all know this, sometimes children are ungrateful Right? Some of you need to put a, mir a little mirror in front of you. That person right there in, the in that picture, that mirror? Yeah. They need to be reminded. Why, why, is, why is that a big thing when we're ungrateful? Why, why are we ungrateful? Why do we have that feeling sometimes? You can look at it at a kid. They don't see all the work, all the preparation that their parents or other people have been doing. They don't see it. You know why they don't see it? Why don't, they, why don't kids see it? They're not looking for it. All they see is a spoon with the food in front of their mouth and they're, ah. <laughs> they're not saying, thank you, Gerber, for pureeing all of that food, putting it in a jar, Thank you, mommy and daddy, for going and work, going to work, making money so you could go and buy it from the store. Thank you, mommy, for putting me in this chair, 
putting a bib around so I don't get th stuff all over the place. Thank you, Mommy, for sitting down and taking the time out of your day to feed me. They're not looking for it. Does God, you know, as Christians, when we become believers, when, our, when we become new in our faith, you know what you're called? Say it. Babies. babies. We're babies in the faith. And then, do we stay there? Do we stay over here as babies? Huh? We're not supposed to. <laughs> That's it. That's the key word. Right there. We're not supposed to. Do some people do? Do we know people in, uh, that are, are living in our society just on a physical level, on a human level? They are very ungrateful. They, are, they don't see all the work that's going on. And do, are there people like that? Do you work with anybody like that? Do you have people in your family that are like that? Let me ask you a tough question. Are you sometimes like that? <laughs> we are. We do get in that. Somebody like, no, never. <laughs> we all struggle with this because it's a perspective. We don't see certain things. And God is trying to show himself to people who are looking. Tom came up to me. He told me he's a Native American. I'm a Native American. My tribe is out of El Paso. We got other Native Americans who are here, you know, and other people that you're not Native American, but you appreciate creation. You appreciate the, the moon, the stars, the sky. Did you see how big that moon was the other day? Friday night? Strawberry. What? Strawberry moon, whatever you want to call it, it's a big moon. <laughs> that was a massive moon. I went walking Saturday in the cool of the night because my wife and I, we were taking just a break away. We were at the coast enjoying the cool weather. And I took a walk. I told Alice, hey, you want to come to take a walk with me? No, it's freezing out there. <laughs> <laughs> so I go walking. We're in a campsite. We're, you know, got trailers and all this stuff. I'm walking. Basically, it's like a, I felt like I was in, Ensenada. I mean, there was people party. It was, it was like fires all over the place. And it was like uh, Rosarito. Or it was like, it, it, it was awesome, man. And I was like, man, can I join you? <laughs> man, man, I could smell, I could smell carnitas. I could smell, man, so I think somebody was over there even making some tripas out there on the grill. I'm taking a walk and I see that moon and I'm like, oh my God, I stood there probably for five minutes just looking at it and I was thinking like Tom he was saying he was saying this morning he said you know those are all free God made those all these joys are all around us if you look for it if you are looking for it. he will reveal all of his glory all of his goodness to you as long as you're looking for it you know he's doing some beautiful things we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to do our announcements after the, the, after the, um, the message. But God has done some beautiful things. And we can't be babies. Otherwise, we'll miss it. And it's okay if we are in our faith that we're theirs. But God will grow us. Are you willing to let God grow you? Do you want to see the things that he's done for you? Do you? Some of us, we're used to missing things. We don't even realize it. But God wants to give us eyes to see and ears to hear how he has done beautiful things for you and I. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you are here in our midst, and you're doing some awesome things in and through us. And so, Lord, we pray that in the name of Jesus, you would open our eyes to your word so we could take it in, 
And then we could also enjoy every blessing, preparation, every thing that you've had your hand on, and we will not miss it. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. And we'll start at verse 12, because we've, we've been going through Ephesians. Ephesians is a beautiful book. Paul the Apostle wrote this book to us, to the Ephesians first, and it should be shared to the church. And he has a purpose. The first chapter talks about how blessed we are. It says we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm, in the heavenly places. We, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You know that? You, not according to me, not according to your emotions, not according to how you feel, but according to the Word of God. Go ahead and you, let's, let's, let's just review that. E Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. We have it up there. We'll put it up there just to remind you so you don't take my word for it. Sometimes, you know, verse 3, he says, this is Paul, so he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And read it, read it out together. Who has in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He begins this whole book with this statement, and then he starts unpacking how God has blessed us. Are you blessed? According to this verse... We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. God has poured out upon you some amazing stuff. Some of you might say, yeah, but I don't see it. What did we just talk about? Why don't we see it? Why? Because we're over here. What are we? We're immature. We're babies. We don't see it. As we get older, stronger, as we get go through, like um, um, Ross was saying, start going through trials and testing and God shows himself, we start maturing, right? We start engaging with, the, with um, the calling God has upon us and we start getting stronger and stronger and stronger and now we're able to see more of his hand everywhere. I see Jesus everywhere. I see God everywhere. I see his hand upon my family. Man, you know what? I don't just see him now. I don't just see him in the future. You know what? I look back, I didn't even realize, but he was, his hand was on me. His, his angel were protecting me. I look back and I could see that God has been working, trying to get my attention. And so now, as we are believers, trusting in the Lord, we're born again. We're not there. You need to be born again first. You need to be a babe first. Born again as a babe. And then you start seeing the spiritual blessings. Now we go to verse <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12. He's going to get a little specific on what we have. Are you there? Okay, he's coming up. Chapter 4, verse 12. We'll begin there and then we'll start unpacking that. And there's a couple of a list of scriptures, and I want, um, I'm going I'm to lay this out for you here. And um, I want somebody to go to Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Somebody, another person, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. And then someone else... Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. Have those all ready, and I want you, um, if you could, uh, um, I'll tell you when, but I'll have you stand up and you can read that, and we'll also have those scriptures on the screen. <clears throat> Go back one more verse, my brother, verse 11. It's coming up. We got a scripture. There you go. <laughs> It says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. This is to introducing a couple of 
specific, they call them offices that are in the church. You go back to verse, go back to verse 10. He who descended is the very one who ascended. Who's that talking about? Jesus. He says, higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So it's talking about Jesus. It's talking about how he went to heaven. He came, he descended. When did he descend? When did Jesus descend? When he was born, when he came to the earth, when he was born. Where was he born at? Huh? In a manger in Bethlehem. Was it beautiful? Was it a, a nice place? No. He was born amongst, he was in a trough. Bugs. Stinky. Environment. Indicating that he will come and descend to the lowest place. It doesn't matter how low down you think you are. Doesn't matter how messed up you think you are. Doesn't matter how far off you think you are from being saved. He proved it already that he will go to the depths. And he's not going to go around. I'll help you, but, you know, can, can I touch you from far? I'm going to get a stick. Uh, okay, here, okay, here, let me show you where the Bible is. You know, there's John 3 16 right there. Okay, oh, oh, okay. I'm, he's not like that. He will be right there in your stench, in your filth. Because he is seeking the lost. So he proved it. He proved it. Somebody say he proved it. <laughs> he proved it. Now the question is, do you believe the, the, the testimony? Do you believe the scriptures that indicates that? He who descended is the very one who ascended. So he descended and he also ascended after he was crucified in order to fill the whole universe. Now, um, we're going sort of backwards, but let's go back to the, the previous verse. Verse 9. One more. Verse 8. This is why it says, he's quoting now from Psalms. He's quoting from the Old Testament. He's quoting a scripture. Now he does a little change though a little bit. He changes it. He does a little bit of a, a change on it. It says, this is why it says, so now he's in quotes, when he ascended on high, he took many captives, and then read that last portion of the, of the sentence, and gave gifts to his people. Are you one of his people? So you've been given what? been given gifts. You're blessed. All right. So this is what the whole idea is, is Paul the Apostle is talking about how much of a blessing God has been to us through Jesus Christ, and he has given us gifts. And now he's going to go specifically on a, a, a office of gifts, but we're going to also go to a list of gifts that we can all share in. Are you ready? These are, it's Christmas morning, guys. It's Christmas morning. It's not the 25th, but we're close to 23rd. All right. So go back to, uh, let's go to verse 12. Verse 11, I'm sorry. So Christ himself, these are some of the gifts that he gave. Some people get um, too happy with things, right? And they think, hey, if I'm one of these, then that means, hey, I'm a gift. I'm a gift. You know, because it says, so Christ gave himself the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. These are the offices established by Christ in the church. These are offices. These are um, places where God has raised up people to be in. And first of all, you got to realize this. This is a calling on people's lives. You're called by God. How do we know this? Because this is Paul the Apostle. In the beginning, he says, I, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, called by God. That's what he says. Do you know, just because you put a title on your little name tag here that says apostle or pastor or prophet or whatever, does not make you one of those offices. Hello? Hello? 
Haven't you been seeing what's been going on online? A lot of people. And we should all know this. Do you know a lot of posers out there? Huh? There's a lot of posers in this world. Not only out in the world, but also in the church. A lot of posers. And I love, honestly, it's a blessing for posers to be exposed. Did you know that? Some of you are like, oh, no, I, they, were my, they were a great author. I really loved following them. I love their teaching, all this stuff. No, brothers and sisters, this is God wants you to have pure. God wants you to have real, authentic gifts. He doesn't want you to have, ladies, a cubic zirconia. Hello? He wants you to have a real diamond. Amen. And so when a counterfeit $100 bill comes up, you should be happy. Isn't that right, Mike? Prophets? My God. They're a dime a dozen now. If you can have a YouTube channel, you're probably a prophet. And I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you. And da 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 and da 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 and that, it didn't come to pass. And now it's like, don't worry. I got another one for you if you're willing to hear me. They just got exposed and people are still following. You know what some, pe some of these people do? They even give money to them. You know what this is called? Blind loyalty. God is trying to expose what is fake and what is real so you can see what a true gift is. Now, you know, there's a lot of people that are in church and um, I'll hear this statement a lot. Man, I can't stand the church. You ever heard that? You ever say that? <laughs> Let me just tell you something. As you grow, your perspective gets, gets um, matured. You will never say that. First of all, it's not my church. It's not your church. It's not that church, a church. This is God's church. He said, upon this rock, I will build. Say it again. This is the church that Jesus established. It's his church. Now, are there people in a church that, met, that gives it a bad name? How about pastors? Are there pastors that are, that are in it that give it a bad name? Are there prophets? Are there people who maybe started off right and didn't finish right? Are they, do they give it a bad name? Are there mean people sometimes in church? Are you a mean person? <laughs> Judgmental, you know? Let me just say, let me just say this. The church is God's creation. It's his church. And it's made up, say this, of me. It's made up of me. I am part of the church. I am in the church. And you know what? Does Jesus love the church? He does. So love what Jesus loves. He loves the church. And the church is the environment. It is the proving ground. It is the... The laboratory where people who are called into an office are tested. And you will see who's right and who is wrong. Or you might see people who are in training. Maybe they're a pit. A what? Not a pit bull? No, a pastor in training. <laughs> But they act like a pit bull. Uh, look at them over there, Pastor. Look at them over there. Uh, you know, I'm like, what's wrong? You, what's this? They're all pork chops to me. Uh, I want to tell everybody what to do. Look at the way she's dressed. Look at the way he's acting. Look at the way. That, look, 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 look. Hey. CD. Not compact disc. Calm down. Calm down. Don't you just love when your husband tells you that, ladies? Hey, wife, calm down. 
Mm, you're gonna get a pot right in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so God gave gifts to the church, and these are some of the gifts. The apostles. What is an apostle? What's that? So you have the 12 apostles first, right? The 12 disciples called by Jesus Christ personally. They are called apostles. But are they the only apostles? Was Paul part of the 12? No, but he is one. He is an apostle. And what April said is true. They are the sent ones. They are sent. And did Jesus send the disciples to go preach the gospel? You know what? Let me just tell you something. As the Father has sent me, this is Jesus talking. He says, as the Father has sent me, was Jesus sent? Yes, he was sent. According to that statement, as the Father has sent me, so I send you, as he's talking to the disciples. The disciples were to be goers. And they're not, they're not like, a, you know, like the song goes, return to send. A... <laughs> no, 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 no. We are moving. We are going to wherever God has sent us. We are goers. The disciples were goers. The Apostle Paul was a goer. People, God has called us to be goers. We, so we, does that make us an apostle? No. It's just following the model that is set for us of what we are to be like. But Paul the Apostle was an, was an apostle who was sent. What, did, what was indicative? What was the nature of Paul's ministry. If you think about it. What's that? That's right. He went to different lands. Right? He moved from Jerusalem. He went to Antioch. He went to Greece. He went to... Um, he even went, his whole goal was to make it to Rome. And even farther, Spain. Did you know that? That was his goal. He wanted to preach the gospel to the whole world. And in his mind, the known world was that. That was his... But let me just tell you something. When God it puts a fire inside of you, you want to send... You want to let everybody know. That's what an apostle is. They are senders, and they have a gifting from God. Not only do they go... What did Paul do when he went to the different towns? Huh? He established churches. He had the ability to raise up leaders. Find pastors. Evaluate who should be in leadership. Who shouldn't. Rebuking people. You know he would rebuke people? He would, he would get a report that was at a, at a church in Corinthians. He found out they were divided. People were saying, I am of Paul. I am of Peter. I am of Jesus. And, you know, he's saying, hey, cut it out. You guys are all should be about the Lord. And then he said, you, should, you who are following me, hey, I didn't baptize none of you guys. So you guys better calm down. You guys should be about Jesus. Let me just ask you a question here. First of all, on a societal level, there are, there is a, established unit. There's an established um, group of people, two people, and they're to be one. What, is, what am I describing? Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Mother and father. Just in an evaluation, observation, how's that going in our world right now? Huh? Shaky. It's shaky. Are the two one or are the two are a lot of times separate? There's a lot of division, isn't there? What about families? Fathers, mothers, and children. How's that looking? Huh? A lot of broken families? A lot of broken relationships? What about between sisters, brothers, and siblings? How's that going? 
Ooh, man. You got some good, juicy gossip among families, huh? It's like, you know, are the favorite word, if you were to put a word that is like the banner, you know, there's, a, there's an old song, his banner over me is love. You know, that's like a, indicative of who we are, what our sort of uh, the fruit and the environment we have. The banner over me is love. His banner over me is love. It's love. You know, the love. The banner over the family, what is it right now? What? Dysfunction. That's right. It's dysfunction. You know, dysfunction, function. What's your unction? <laughs> We got dysfunction all over the place. You know what? Some people are happy that they're dysfunctional. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. I finally fit in somewhere. <laughs> I've been an outsider this whole time. Now I feel like I'm inside. Finally. If you have that going on in our society, you have that going on in our families, what do you think is going on? What, let, let, let me back up. What about politically? In our country, even nationally, do you have a lot of division? Wars? Rumors of wars? You have, you know, it's so sad because you have pastor, you have, you have churches that are being split because of political affiliations. It's horrible. Horrible. Before I am any political affiliation, we are Christians. And before we are independent, elephant, or donkey, we are lamb. <laughs> We're not lame. We are following the lamb, the lamb of God. God will always bring us together. He will bring us together. And the apostle would find divisions and he would bring instruction. Come together. That's why it was saying, you know, if, if you go a little further, a little, a little further back in um, verse, let's go to verse 7 there. Read that together. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Each one of us, there's that introduction of the word, one. Each one of you individually has been given what? What have you been given? What did you do to receive that? What did you do to earn that? You can never do that. You can never do anything to receive it. If you did, then it wouldn't be grace. But all of us have, all of us are at different phases in our development. Milestone, different milestones. Some of us are babies. Some of us are pre, uh, preschool. Some of us are elementary. Some of us junior high, high school, college age. Some of us are way over there. We're, we're old. I mean... We're about ready. <laughs> We're about ready. Take me, Jesus. <laughs> you know, whatever the place, I, where, the grace of God fills us every phase as Christ apportions it. That means he's in charge. He knows how much to give you. You ever been around people who like, this is all I have? I want... A big old bowl of grapes like that person. How come my bowl of grapes is small? Or whatever, right? We're always looking at somebody else to see and evaluating. Next verse. I'm sorry. We're going to go further back. We're going to go further back. Go to, let's, 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 let's go to verse 1 here. As a prisoner of the Lord... I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. We have received an amazing calling. You are called. Next verse. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. How many love those two words, humble and gentle? Be humble. Be gentle. Let me just tell you something. He's telling you to do something that you 
cannot do. It's like you are at a gym and there is a thousand pounds, big old weight, and he says, I want you to go in, here's, on this side it's 500 pounds, that's gentle. On this side it's another 500 pounds, it's humble. And I want you to get under there and I want you to lift it. You can't do it. Why did he, he we will try. I can, I can do it. No, 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 no. He's, I'm going to do it. I can, I can do it. Look at everybody. Look at, look at, they're humble. They're gentle over here. I can do it. You can't do it. He wants you to come to the place where you realize you can't do it. And then you will come to him and he will say, I'm willing to give you humility, my humility. I'm willing to give you my gentleness that comes through my Holy Spirit. Next verse. Make every effort to keep the, say that word, Unity. of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Next verse. There is, and just as you were called to, when you were called, next verse. Next verse. This is God and Paul outlining come together. You know, there's a lot of counterfeit people that are out there trying to tell you, we just need to come together. You, during the hippie movement, you had the peace love movement, right? Counterfeit, it's, it was fake. They weren't doing it with Jesus. They were doing it with spiritism. They were doing it with all these weird, you know, whatever. Let's bring them, be, let's come together right now. For me. Right, there's a lot of, you know, kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. You know, you had all these different movements that are trying to do something. You know what they're doing? What I just, what I just illustrated. They are saying, let's come together, let's be gentle. Let's be humble, and let's show everybody we can lift it. No, we can't. Without God's help, the one Lord, one faith, one family, only God can bring us together. Only God can unite hearts that are going different directions, that are prickly, hearts that are broken, scarred. Our God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, we cannot come together without our eyes being opened, maturing, without maturing to see we need God's help. Next verse, uh, let's go back to um, verse 11. So he gave apostles, apostles, 12 apostles. The apostles were also sent ones, missionaries, going around establishing churches, bringing correction. Prophets. What's a prophet? First of all, let's, 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 let's um, have an accurate uh, description of what a prophet was according to the Old Testament. Because this, while this was written in the New Testament, most of these um, people, most of the people that were reading, they knew a prophet from the Old Testament um, offices. So what's a prophet? They speak a messenger, a message from God. Some of it has to do with now, pertains to now. Many times, oftentimes, it could have to, it could be, uh, have to do with the future. There's even interpretation of what has happened in the past. So a prophet, but nevertheless, they speak God's message. And throughout the years, throughout church history, there have been many, 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 many. I'm going to write a song. Many, 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 many false prophets. <laughs> They're everywhere. They're a dime a dozen false prophets. And they have followings. And these pro false prophets, you know what they do? They say false words. But let me tell you. 
tell me, what's a, what does a good counterfeit $100 bill look like? Huh? Looks real. Feels real. What? It's got a, some of them have a line inside of it. There's usually something. There's usually something. A lot of times, counterfeiters, they purposely put something that is different and they only know about it. But 99.99% of the time, it looks real. And it fools many people. Right? What's that? Turn the different color, the different ink, right, or the paper. How do we know a false prophet? I love, I love uh, my brother, uh, Mike. He's been a, um, a, a radio DJ, a Christian radio DJ, who has had a lot of people go on the radio and have pro radio programs. Um, how long? When did you start? Christian radio. 1976, he was in Christian radio. He was a DJ. He was called Michael B. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to what? <laughs> he was a DJ here at, um, at KERI, and then it became KXL. KERI started KXL, and he was also KHIS. So 96.5, 88.3, uh, not 88.3, but um, uh, what was it, uh, 1410 or 1180. 1180. 1180. So he was, and he had many teachers who would come on the radio. They would pay money, they had following, they would be able to pay money because they had money. People would give them money. I'm sure there were some false teachers. How do we know a false prophet? Go ahead and um, say that. He that prophesies in the name of the Lord, and if that thing that they prophesy doesn't come true, is a false prophet, and do not be afraid of them. You know, there's a lot of people that have predicted the coming of the Lord. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I think I told you guys about, we were, uh, I was over in England and our church got, uh, the church that I was a part of, a small church, it got caught up in uh, this one book that was out. And uh, we were in England and we got this big old box sent to us by our church and they wanted us to hand it out to everybody in England, Manchester. And the title of the book was 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. <laughs> and then 88 went, came and gone. 1989 came, and there was another book. 89 Reasons <laughs> Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1989. <laughs> That's just one that I know of, but there have been many groups of people have been trying to, try to predict when Jesus was coming back like they knew. Like, you know what they were when it didn't come true? What are, what are they? Say it again. False prophets. False prophets. That's right. So counterfeits have been laid out. Why is that a good thing? Because now you can follow what's real. People who are truly called by God. So I say, if people have been exposed, if people have been, you know, uh, put out as false prophets, I'm like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do some more, Jesus. Let's weed them all out. Let's get them all out because we need, we need direction. We need, we need to have authentic, re real messages coming from your, that's, that's timely. How about evangelists? What's an evangelist? What? Okay, yeah, but uh, 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 Apostle did that too. They went, they moved out. A lot of, you know, I, I know a lot of Apostles or people that call themselves Apostles in different churches, and they don't, they don't go nowhere. <laughs> like, 
No, 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 I won't. I'm not going to go. No, I'm not going to go to Timbuktu. Have you seen the kind of food they eat over there? <laughs> Have you seen the bathroom situation over there? I was like, no, you're not an apostle. Get out of here. <laughs> an evangelist is somebody, first of all, you just you look at the word. Evangel. My sister-in-law is here. You know what her name is? Evangelina. You know what that means? Messenger. An angel. A messenger of God. And what is the message that an evangelist speaks? God loves you. He has an amazing plan for you. He died for you. You have a problem, like we all have a problem. What is that problem? Sin. It separates us from him. Yet he has answered that problem for you. And if you just simply receive the gift of grace, of salvation, that he died for you, he resurrected for you, and that you repent of your sins, you say, ah, oh, you know what, I'm a sinner. I thought I could do it without him. And I, this whole time, I mean, I've been trying to do it without him. But I, I admit, I cannot do it without him. I need Jesus. Guess what happens? He will come into your life. He says he's knocking at the door. And he's waiting. How come he doesn't kick the door in? He's God. He's all-powerful. He's created the heavens and the earth. Nothing can stop him. Why is he knocking on your door? How come he's not beating it down? He's a gentleman. He's waiting for you to ask. He's waiting for you to open the door. He's waiting for you to want. He's waiting for you to be at that place. He's waiting. But he's faithfully. So this morning, he's probably knocking on your heart right now. Is he just knocking on the heart in the beginning? All throughout our whole walk, he's knocking on the door. Open, 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 open. That's right. Are you willing? Are you willing to open the door? That's what an evangelist does. He helps us understand we need Jesus. Are you there? Spreading the gospel, the gospel message that Jesus came into this world. He conquered sin. He conquered death. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. And he wants to lift you up. Embrace you. He's not angry with you. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he can't wait to smother you with all of his gifts like we were just talking about. And then what's the last thing? I say the last thing because some people put um, two things, but do you see the comma there? Usually they put these two together. Pastors and teachers. A pastor is usually a teacher, you know. It's, it, it's um, you know, um, it sort of goes hand in hand. A pastor is, what's the, where do we get the word pastor from? You know, you know what it's, what's, what's describing, what's the word picture here? Shepherd. The shepherd, because like sheep, we all go astray. And um, we need shepherds. But are we the chief shepherd? We are following the chief shepherd. And we're doing what he has called us to do. And a pastor is also there to help teach because we, we want to help teach the scriptures so the, so the congregation can eat. But we want to teach the congregation to feed themselves. In other words, mature. Okay, verse, verse 12. Why are, why are these four to five offices given? Read it together. To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. What is, what is the end result of all this? What does Christ want? That we would be built up. So the body of Christ would be built up. Okay? Now let me just uh, give you a little scenario. Um, you watch football sometimes, you know, it's not, it's not in season right now, but we watch football. And what if you were to watch a quarterback hike the ball to himself, run over to here, and get the ball and throw it really high so that way he could run really fast and then catch it and then start take off running? Would that be good? Huh? Unfortunately, 
in the church, immaturity and dysfunction and all this stuff, that's usually what's expected in a church setting that's dysfunctional. They expect whoever's leading, it could be either the pastor or somebody that's leading a program or whatever, to do everything. Hello? But God has given leaders and offices in the church to equip his people for... Say it again. Say it again. Now these are all... So the body of Christ will be built up, unified, matured. We can be the opposite of what the world is doing. Going away, running away from each other, not coming together, not being united. Works of service. Now, you know, we have people that do works of service in our church. You know that? Can I just highlight them for, for a second? Can I highlight them? Okay. So um, let's see. Uh, let's talk, Esther. Look at this. She likes to make sure that we have a little bit of beautiful things in our church. She also put. Uh, she also uh, is our bookkeeper. She keeps track of finances coming in, and going out, helping reimburse people for different things that are part of the ministry. She's all doing that in the background. She puts, uh, she does deposits. She just keep, she keeps, she she uh, finds out names of people. She goes out and does little things. Nobody knows. You probably don't even realize that. But she has come to a place of a work of service. She does that unto the Lord. Esther, it's unto the Lord, all for Jesus, huh? Beautiful. Not to mention, she has to hang, she has to put up with this big guy right next to him, yeah. right next to her. <laughs> It's all for Jesus. <laughs> Let me just highlight Charles for a minute. Um, ah, <laughs> you know what Charles does is he's practiced on his guitar for many, many years. And he didn't know while he was working out there, while he was playing the guitar in high school and his younger years, learning how to do this and that. He didn't know it was going to be for the Lord. Then the Lord captures his heart. And now he's able to use all of those skills, all of those things that he learned, God-given talent, by the way, and he gives, he's able to use them to the Lord right here. He practices. He, he has a little room where he's got music there. And you know, let me just say something. I, have, I, I say kudos to a lot of musicians because a lot of times people, you, you, a lot of, you only see what they do here, you know, a brief moment. But there's a lot of years of preparation time, of sacrifice, to get that skill that nobody's, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, they pay money for, te for lessons and they, they got to uh, do research on what kind of um, um, chords and how it all fits together. It's a whole world. It's a whole different world. And they have immersed themselves in that place without nobody knowing, without nobody telling them to do it. They do it because they love it. And now it's being used for the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? April, when she first started coming, she was watching online. She would put her little comments on, the, on, the, on, on, um, on our live stream. It's pretty cool. I'm like, I, um, one of our guys who helped start the church, his name was Scott, uh, he would, I'd say, hey, who's April? Like, oh, yeah, that's, that's one of the ladies who I do. I do her, their pools. And they, I told them about our church, and they said they want to be a part of it. And so they're on live stream. And then... When she started coming to church, and then she started um, being a part of um, Celebrate Recovery, and then she it really resonated with her. It's like, wow, this is this is a good program. This is a good thing to help me, you know, work through some of my issues. And one of the things that I remember, it's like it was like <laughs> it was like yesterday, April. I'm sorry, but the reason why I bring it up is because God transforms. And I was thinking about this response that she had when Scott who was leading Celebrate Recovery, said, what we're going to do is we're going to go through this step program and you guys are going to write your testimony down and you're going to share it. You're going to stand up here and share it. She says, I am, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing that. I'm not, no, no, no. And now, the girl is up here all the time helping others work through their issues, 
We're praying through them, just being a facilitator of God's grace and mercy, going through the scriptures, going through the Beatitudes, going through so they can be free, just like she is being set free. You know, I think of my brother here. Not Terry, <laughs> Tracy. <laughs> My brother here, he, uh, when he first started, I kept on calling him Terry, but his name was Tracy. I was like, thank you, my brother, for forgiving me those early days. But Tracy, he had a heart for motorcycles. He wanted to be part of a group. So he went to Broken Chains. And then Broken Chains is part of Sub Recovery. And they said, hey, you want to come be part of Sub Recovery? It's like a 12-step program type deal. You know, it's a spiritual deal. And, oh, I... I've been through it before. I guess I'll come and try it. So then he came. He liked it. He said, then they invited him. Hey, you know, we're here. You're here. You know, this is part, this is actually a ministry, an extension of Open Gate Church. Well, I have come, gone to church in the past, but bad experiences, people judgmental, dysfunction, right? He's like, probably gun shy. Probably had wounds from this. And, but God gave him the, the ability to work through those yeah. come on a Sunday morning are you sad or are you glad oh, I'm very. very happy thank you Lord God has healed him of these, these hurts and, and now he doesn't do, just do this he also does stuff to raise money for the Jameson Center he puts together things for them it's beautiful he, these are acts, works of service Works of service. Works of service. I think of my wife. How many ate snacks today? Huh? You guys like those snacks? You guys like those things, huh? Oh, and she's not the only one that brings those, but she, she tries to make it a, a point to make sure we have some snacks out there. So that way we can host you and you guys can be blessed. Um, we have others, Jojo, Abby, Jennifer, they're out here putting together all the stuff that you have and that has to be put away. You know, I got some sound stuff that needs to be set up. I would, before I would have to come and set up all that stuff. And now we train these guys, and these guys, there's a few people in the church that know how to do it. So all I do is come in, and I get going on our music set, and I, they're doing works of service. My wife, she's, she makes sure that, you know, her and Jeannie, from the beginning. Jeannie, raise your hand. Yeehaw! Yeehaw. There she is. Boy, howdy. <laughs> she... Her and my wife, they have been teaching the children. But as we get older, in all these acts of service, as we get bigger, as we want to minister to others, as we become functional, united, more of us, first of all, we appreciate it. And let me just say, I'm not saying every, I know I'm not highlighting everybody. I know I'm not. I know there are unsung heroes. There are. I'm going to miss them. Lord, and I pray that throughout the, the weeks and months to come, we can highlight all, really. But even if I didn't mention them, let me just say, mention all those who are doing acts of service, God sees it all. God sees it all. Say that together. God sees it all. Say it again. God sees it all. Oh. You're bringing a smile to him. You're bringing joy to his heart because this is what his desire is, to see the body of Christ be built up because we've been equipped by people who are in offices to do works of service. It's not done by... You can go ahead and get on the piano there. You don't have to... The leader doesn't have to do everything. Let me just say... You know that's the way the church, most churches, established churches, um, operate. Did you know that? I've been in 
Uh, inner city churches. I've been in suburbia churches. Churches that got money. Churches that don't have money. I've been in both. And you know what the, often the expectation is? Whoever is being paid or whoever is being in a leadership position, they do it. That's why we have, that's why we put you in that position. That's why we pay you because you are to do it all for us. Yeah, that's the expectation, really. And it's like, it, it is ingrained in the church of that dysfunction where they want one person to do it all. But no, you have it reversed. Let me just tell you something about works of service. Sometimes, oftentimes, people don't see your works of service. And because people don't see your works of service, sometimes you, as a person doing works of service, you get discouraged. I know that. I know that. Our encouragement can come from other people who do see it. This is why we need maturity. We need people that are maturing in the Lord so they can see you. Their eyes can be open and be grateful to the Lord for bringing somebody like you to, to engage, to be a part of what he is doing. Let me just say, the pastor and a, and a, um, a representative of a, a team of people who came from a different church, a different part of town. We came here to establish a church here and to bring hope to Oildale. And you want to know what I have inside of my heart? Gratefulness for you. Gratefulness for you. I see God's hand doing beautiful things in you. And it's not because of me, it's not because of our team, it's not because it's because of his grace and mercy. I don't have to do this. Really, I get to do this. He opened the door, and I am so grateful for you. Irving, I'm so grateful for you, my brother. Tom, I'm so grateful for you. Perry, I'm so grateful for you. Christina, I'm so grateful for you. William, I'm so grateful for you. This whole family right here, we're so grateful for you. Even our sister, first time here, we're so grateful for you. My brother, he belongs to the church here, right? I'm so grateful for you. We are grateful because we see God's hand. And we're not babies. We're maturing. Oh, we're not where we need to be. But at least we're not where we used to be. God is doing some beautiful things as he's building us up. <clears throat> Last thing, Romans. Go ahead and put that up list of Romans chapter 12, is it? There you go. Let me just tell you something. You ready to open up some gifts? We're just going to go through this list. We have different gifts. We all have different gifts, and here they are. According to the grace given to each of us, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If that's your gift, Make sure it's your gift, because if it's not, and you try to do it, what are you? False. Next verse. Seven. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. Next verse. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. These are gifts. Next, uh, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, some more gifts. You ready? There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. What's that list? Go ahead. Next one, next verse, verse 5. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord... 
Next verse. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one is the same God at work. So there's diversity of work, of gifts, but it's all God. Next verse. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. If you've been given a gift, it is to help all of us be good. Amen. It is to help all of us even to rise, never to put people down or make people feel ashamed. Next verse. Or To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. Next verse. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. So you got faith, gifts of faith, gifts of healing. Next one. To another miraculous powers, ability to do miracles. To another prophecy. There it is, that prophecy again. Speak God's message. To another distinguishing between spirits. You have a, a, an ability to discern if something is godly or satanic. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. You know, you have an ability, you have a heavenly language that has been given, and to still another, the interpretation of those tongues. Next verse. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So let God be the gift giver. And don't look at your neighbor and say, I want that one. How come you didn't give me that one? No, no, no. Let God be God. And he gets to give you what you want, what you need, what he desires for you. Let me just say something, and then we'll end with this. God gives you gifts, you and me gifts. Some people will say, then that's the only gift you'll have. Some say, if God gave you the gift of faith, then that's what will be with you for the rest of your life. We go through seasons. We go through different challenges. And there are different gifts that God will give us at different times. You know? Yeah. God will give you the ability to do things. Whatever is coming your way, he will give you the ability to do it and to hit it and to take it in. So, bow your heads. Lord, we pray. Sometimes it's hard. Oh, you're my brother, you're my sister. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you give to us. I pray, Lord, for your body, that they would be raised up, that they will be built up, because all these gifts are being engaged. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to turn a corner and pick up this morning's offering. And we just like to say again, thank you. We see God's hand in your life. We see that it's because of your generosity that you are able to give. That is from the Lord. That is the grace of God. And you see what we're doing here. It is having a benefit to our community and even each other. And just a couple of announcements. Monday, we have Celebrate Recovery, which meets here at 5.30, 5.15, uh, 6 o'clock for worship and lesson, and 7 to 8 for group. Come to that. They've been having a lot of people come. It's been beautiful. Praise the Lord. People are being set free. Bible study at the Palms, Tuesday mornings at 10 a.m., still going through the book of Ephesians. Be praying for that if you can't go. If you want to go to it, show up. It's right there on 5300 Hageman Road. Next one. Uh, Tuesday night prayer, Pop Tuesday, not Taco Tuesday, Pop Tuesday, power of prayer. And uh, we come 6 to 7.30, last, last Tuesday I wasn't here, we were out of town, they had an amazing prayer meeting. They were telling us about it. God is moving. God is, you want to know where you, where your gifts are, you want to know how to employ them, you might be able to discover them at a prayer meeting. And then the last thing is we have... Uh, 4th of July, a booth that's coming up, um, and we need some sign-ups. There's been some sign-ups, a uh, sheet that's been going around. We all need to come together, works of service. We're one body, we're one church, so we would appreciate if you can 
uh, sign in. It's, it's a little harder this season because it's during the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It's a little harder. Usually on a weekend, people have more time. But we just ask, Lord, help us to get through this hot, you know, selling fireworks. And it also benefits our church, benefits different projects we got going on. So be thinking about that. You can see Maria to sign up. Um, let's stand together. And let me see. Who do we want? Who do, uh, Trace. Pray for this morning's offering. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this, uh, for bringing us together, Lord. And, and, and Father, we pray that the uh, offering this morning, as it comes together, that you would multiply it and, and bless us, Lord, that um, we're able to meet all our goals. And, and uh, thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Amen. Ross, come on up here and help me sing this song here. You're my brother, you're my sister. Take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. There's no foe that can defeat us when we're walking side by side. As long as there's of service, gifts, diverse gifts, diverse personalities. You guys are a blessing because you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. There is one God who gave it, one purpose, one body, one faith. We are one. Now go. Leave this place. Husbands and wives, be one. Families, be one. Church families, be one. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next week. <laughs>